goals that you can try to accomplish. And I've been coaching a powerlifting team now for the last 15 years. And so I've learned a few things kind of along the way. Uh, my own kind of whys have uh, modified over time. So I want to share some of my thoughts. Some of you express some interest in maybe that you would do this uh, with your group. And so I'm just going to give you some insights on this. And if this leads to further questions, feel free to post and I'll do the best I can to share my experience. So if you're going to set up a powerlifting team, first you want to have your why. What is the reason for creating the team? And usually there's kind of three kind of big reasons. One is, and I did this in the very beginning, purely selfishly, if you're a powerlifter, it's a pain in the ass working out by yourself. You need to have a good spot on bench press and squats, and it's fun to kind of suffer with other people. So I wanted to have real regular workout partners and friends that I kind of knew would be there. So in the beginning, I set up a team for selfish reasons to really kind of enhance my own lifting, and I thought I could help them uh, along the way, and so it would be mutually beneficial. But that was a little more selfish. I know I was lifting, and I was a member of my own team. A second reason is to make money. If you have a skill, right, there's nothing at all wrong with advertising and marketing that skill. And if people then want to pay you to coach them and take them through, and obviously you can combine it, doesn't mean it, just because you're making money doesn't mean you can't have fun. So it's pretty cool to then coach and run a team. Uh, that's currently what I do. I'm not a member of my current team, but I am just the coach. And then a third reason is because you want to win or perform well in competitions. You know, it's pretty cool when you go to a competition and you have a group of five or 10 or 15 lifters and you kind of take over that competition. And certainly there are team divisions in certain competitions and obviously getting some sweet team trophies, right, are pretty cool and make you feel pretty good. And especially if you have, you know, an extra good lifter there or something like that, that can be kind of a source of pride. Like, yeah, I coach that. You know, if I coach Tom Brady, I don't. Uh, but if I did, I would certainly take some pride in the fact that, hey, I'm working with someone who's won a bunch of Super Bowls and is a great athlete athlete. And so there could be a little bit of an ego in there. But you know, like anytime you endeavor in something, you should understand on a deeper level, what, what's your why? I'm going to focus mainly on you being a member, right, for a little bit. And then when you're not a member, when you're just a quote coach. But let's start with you're a member of, you decided I want to be a member of my own powerlifting team. I love to lift myself. I want to help some others. I want to go to a competition as a team. That can be pretty fun. Remember my first collegiate nationals, I was the only lifter from my college, but some of them had, you know, 20 or 30 people on there. I thought, man, how cool would that be? Um, so usually then the people on the team are your friends. Okay, so when you're doing your own thing and it's you're a member too, you're probably just going to have a group of friends, kind of like workout partners that you're making it more official. Typically, I found those people some tend to have a little bit of a similar skill level. Uh, they may not always be the exact same, but usually get some people that have a little bit similar strength are kind of all in that level together. And honestly, there's more focus on you, right? You're going to be lifting. You're going to be doing things. When you're going through your own workout, a lot of your attention is going to be focused on you and your effort is going to be focused on you. You just need to be aware of that. What do they get, right, when they join a team? Chances are you're going to be charging them less because they're going to get less because less of the focus is on them uh, because they're more of a supplement. So when I was doing this, I charged just what I thought was a really low fee of just it was $100 a year to be on the team. And they got the team t-shirt. And then when we entered into a team, you know, we got to do that. Uh, usually that fee would also cover a team fee, entry fee. So usually it's the same as entering as a person. So, you know, 75 or 100 bucks to do a meet uh, as a team, uh, you know, and that would be covered. Um, and then probably I, I might write their program mainly, mainly just because they'd be doing my program, right? So I'm doing it, but you can follow it as well. And we go on. So there wasn't a whole lot to be uh, on there. Uh, it wasn't just open to any Joe Schmo. So if somebody just came up, even if they had a hundred bucks, it was uh, hey, you know, these are really my friends. And so, you know, basically I invite you to get on the team. And then if you're on there, uh, you can be on there. And if I want to kick you off, uh, you can get kicked off. Okay, but that was certainly fun. Had some great bonding moments. Some of those people are still my best friends uh, as we go through. So that can be pretty awesome. The big negative is you're not making a bunch of cash here. It's more of just a fun experience and you're helping other people out. If you're not a member, you're going to now be a powerlifting coach. Then now we kind of take a slightly different approach. So now you're going to have clients and athletes, not so much friends. Obviously, you can become friends with the person, but it's a little more of a professional relationship. So they're your clients and your athletes, probably going to have a wider skill set, may not just be a specific gender. So now you're probably working with women and men, 
Uh, and even though, this is just a side note, even though you know men make up more powerlifters currently than women, one, the number of women is growing greatly, and two, in my experience, the number of women that are looking for a coach or able to be coached or want to be coached is greater. So you'll probably have a 50-50 or maybe even more women than men on your team, especially if you can kind of cater to that. Now the focus is on them. You're not lifting, right? You're not thinking about, I got to squat 500 pounds in three minutes. Your focus is 100% on them. And so therefore, they're going to get more out of these things. But of course, they're probably going to pay more because now you wouldn't be doing this, you know, just for free, most likely, uh, whereas you would be working out on your own anyway. So then they're just kind of supplementing something you're already doing. Now you're giving up your time. So of course, you're going to charge a little bit more. What you charge is going to be hugely variable. Um, I would suggest you look at it kind of in a couple of ways. And I know I have a few people, you know, that are doing this that are on my own team, but I don't mind being pretty transparent with the way, you know, things work. So first, what do they get? You want to figure out what they get. Some of the options to include are, is there going to be in-person coaching sessions or is this just like an online team? If it's an online team, you don't have much camaraderie, right? They never kind of get together. To me, one of the most fun things is being in the gym, lifting weights, rocking out with each other. That person's working hard. You're working hard. Everybody's motivated together. So I like to have some in-person coaching, and I like to do that per week. Uh, are you going to write the programs for them? This is obviously pretty huge. If you're writing everybody a program, then and it's not all the exact same program, then that can be quite a time commitment. So keep that up. Are you going to give them day, game day help? A lot of people are looking for that from a coach. So what's going on? Are you going to be there to help them out? Would you help them with nutrition? Right? How much information would you get? If you're going to give them a fully detailed meal plan, that's something to factor in. And then any extras. People like swag, right? They want their shirts. They want singlets. Uh, who covers the team fee uh, when you do competitions? You know, if you have to travel and things like that, who decides on what's going on in the competitions? You want to figure all those things out. So here are some suggestions for you. So one, if you're in a location where you can you know, have a team in a gym, so you want to have some in-person coaching. Uh, you want to figure out how often you want that to be. Obviously, in some ways, more is better. Oh, let's go four days a week. But it's going to be very tough to charge an appropriate amount to get that back. I would suggest you just start with one day a week. Expect them to work out on their own, some, um, but have at least one day a week. Powerlifting workouts tend to be longer than an hour, so if you're a trainer, kind of don't take the hour-long session. I find two hours to work really well. Uh, I personally do it Sundays, 9 to 11 a.m. That works for me, seems to work for the athletes. There's not going to be any perfect time, so just kind of pick what works for you. Just as a heads up, we used to do twice a week, and I was I like the idea of twice a week because I get to work with people more, they're working out more, you know, it's more interaction. But here's the issue. So you don't get 100% attendance. This is like a group training thing. So we have about 20 people on my team. Uh, so usually you're looking to get about a 50% attendance. You're going to get a little bit more, usually closer to a meet. In the middle of summer and weird holidays and stuff, you're going to get even less. So if you have two days... It isn't that now you have 10 people here, 10 people here. What happens is now one of them schedules weird, you got things going on, and it actually disperses the people that show up. So then you get three people on this evening and then four people in the weekend. And then it's kind of like a downer, right? When you have 20 people on a team and only three or four people show up, it's kind of like, oh, how serious is this? What do we have going on? So I found that actually reducing the amount of time that was available increased adherence people are hey it's only one time a week they better get in because otherwise they miss the whole week then they come in and they're building that camaraderie we're having fun and obviously being purely selfish then that's less time that i have to be at the gym and work um especially with my schedule coming back in the evenings you know doesn't work well for me so uh we just do once a week that seems to work pretty well Okay, my people get that in-person coaching, right? So I'm there, I'm supervising, helping them out. I write everybody their program. They tell me how often they want to work out. Okay, obviously we look at goals and what strength there are, and then I'm writing them a custom program. Now, usually what I'll do is I'll have some templates. So, for example, all the beginners follow that the entry-level entry program I've shared with you. But then somebody may be wanting to focus on this, somebody may want to focus on this. Instead of 20 100% customized programs, it's, you know, five people have a similar program and then five people have a similar program. But even still, it's definitely some time. You should know how long it takes you to write those things. Obviously, if I spent, you know, an hour a week that would be 20 hours a week writing a program. That would be a nightmare. You know, for me, it's pretty clearly the in-person coaching is two hours a week. So that's eight hours a month. 
and then it's just under an hour to write someone's program for the month. So basically with 20 people, you know, it usually does balance out to about 20 hours, then a month is what my time investment is. If, and I do also offer the game day coaching that's included in there. I always felt like that'd be a dick thing to kind of be like, you're paying me this fee, I'm going to be here that day, but, you know, that's an extra hundred bucks or whatever. So that's just included in. Um, but that's pretty nice to have that game day help and obviously be prepared. You know, part of the competitions are long. You're going to be there for, you know, 8, 10, 12 hours helping your athletes out, uh, getting them ready. Although it's fun, exciting. I would not write someone a custom nutrition plan as included in that, but I would give them macros and calories because that's pretty easy for me to do. And then usually they get like a t-shirt that goes with it. They also get, you know, since it's my team, I give everybody a copy of the powerlifting book uh, as we go through. Uh, but you could have extras. People could buy clothes and stuff like that. But figure out what you're going to get. I would look at your time, okay? So how long, how much time do you think you're going to spend? So for me, I'm guaranteed to spend two hours every Sunday. And it's a Sunday, right? That's, you know, not always the perfect time. Tough, tough with the family sometimes. But you got to pick a day that works. It's probably going to be a weekend or an evening, almost for sure. So how much time is it, right? So how much, okay, so that's eight hours of my time for sure, plus writing programs, okay? So that's at least another five. And if the team's really full, then that's another 10 or 20 hours, so what do I need to make that worth my time? So you guys want to ask yourself that question. How much time am I giving and what do I need? And obviously I can't answer that for you. You know, I will share for just for me, you know, I need about, I would need about $1,000 to make that kind of worth it. So if I did all of that work and let's say I had 20 people on the team and I was walking out of there with $300, you know, a month, it's fun, right? And I love the people working with it, but you know, that would not work for me. I could just train, you know, three times, right, and be ready to go. So it doesn't, it's got to match that personal training rate or whatever it is that you're used to. Uh, and if I can make more than a thousand, great. And if it's less than that, then we have to kind of reconsider. So then you want to start to think, okay, well, how many people are probably going to be on the team? So you want to charge a rate, right, that's reasonable. You may not get this immediately, right? When I first started, we didn't have 20. We had like five people on the team. And then over time, it picks up. So what can you charge then to get that amount? So let's say, for example, you needed to make $1,000 and you, you, know, you thought you could get 10 people pretty reasonably. All right, you're going to charge about $100 a month. Um, you know, and in some ways, it's a little weird. When I look at it, when I look at it from an, a one-on-one -on -one point of view, so for me, I just charge $75 to be on the team, which personally I think is a really good deal. Uh, and one reason I think that is if somebody just hired me just to write a program, to not meet with them at all, just to write a program, I charge $125 for that. So now I'm writing the program and then getting eight hours of in-person coaching. It's not one-on-one, -on -one, but I'm still there. And then a couple times a year, I'm there the entire weekend helping them out with the game day stuff. Plus they're getting a book. Plus they're getting a shirt, right? And they're getting some other things too. That's an unbelievably good deal, in my opinion. But having said that, let's look at it the other way. I'm also, you know, I've got... If you got 15 or 20 people, right? So you can kind of run the numbers. If I have 20 people charging 75, that's $1,500 for me to get to hang out with people just a couple of hours a week and write some programs, you know, which I'm reasonably good at. And so it's that, you know, from them, it's like, hey, you're getting paid a decent amount to be there. They're going to have reasonably high expectations. So you want to charge an amount that works, but also, you know, I would suggest a little bit on the cheap end. If you go try to go super high end, I don't think that's super successful. Um, so think about what people are charging for online coaching and then basically say, hey, look, you know, I'll charge the same or even less and you get more. Uh, you know, that's a way to do it. There's many different ways to do it, but it works. Um, you know, a couple things to think about. How strict is the team? How strict is the program? You know, is it a, is it a partnership there? What if they want to modify it? How do you feel about that? Uh, who's in charge, right? Is it anyone with a checkbook is on your team? Do you have the right to kick people off? Uh, you know, some people can be really annoying. I've had, I had a lady who just freaked out during competitions, you know, and I just told her straight up, you know, I was like, look, you need to calm down. You're ruining the experience for other people. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to be on the team. And luckily, she did calm down. Not perfectly, but a fair amount. Um, but sometimes you got to lay, you know, you got to lay some groundworks out there. It's your team. It should be fun. Now, there are a couple of negatives. One, writing programs. You know, again, if I have 20 people, I mean, I'm good at writing programs, but even still a half an hour to have a totally customized program with all the right numbers and stuff, you know, that's pretty decent. You know, I send up the programs on a monthly basis. So you got 20 people, that's 10 hours, right? That means that there's a Saturday or Sunday or whatever where it's like I'm locking the door of the office and don't disturb me. You know, that, that's a day that's just completely gone kind of writing programs. You got to factor that in to the equation as well. Uh, you know, 
I know a lot of you are in the power thing kind of, you know, uh, feel.